well. Um, anybody gonna read? Anybody uh, care to handle reading that for me? Five hundred. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for making that announcement. And let's see here. What deck do you want to play with today? I think I want to play with this one. This is a deck that a lot of hype from kind of the more competitive guys has gone around. Basically since we saw that we get Eldrazi Displacer and Reflector Mage. And um, so they want to build a deck like this with a serious like colorless kind of component to blue-white that uses Reflector Mage and Eldrazi Displacer and you know other Cloud Shifty type combos to just drive the opponent cray and uh, cray cray. And I don't know, let's see, is there any adjustments I want to make here? We have a lot of tap lands, but it's very much a mid-range deck. It um, It's low on removal though, which is kind of, it's one of the more uncomfortable things about it. So, like, Spatial Contortion and Declaration of Stone is some of the only serious removal. But the idea is, it, when we get to a mid-game, uh, we use Reflector Mage to stall their mid-game, and then we just kind of go a little combo crazy. So, I think something that I want in the deck... Uh, one thing, I think I have too many cards that use the colorless. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It, so that was, like, 14. And the sources are the lowest, so 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, we don't want too many colorless sources. When you draw two, it's a very sad thing. Uh, and Eldrazi Sky Spawner can get you one, you know, one use of colorless. So I think what I want instead as a way to kind of make more colorless mana with Sky Spawner or to just do other cool ETB stuff since it's an ETB deck is I want to run Energy Flux. And I don't think we have any spirits, but... I still think that the flicker effect is good in a deck like this. Anyway, uh, let's take it out. It's not very fast. It is pretty slow, and it is pretty thoughtful. It requires a lot of um, kind of calculation, figure out what to do and how to do it right. And it is one of those that is going to need some planning to figure out how to avoid the, pri the hold priority issues that plague the game. So let's uh, take it for a spin and see if we can kind of learn. There's a few ways to build this deck too. Um, my way is kind of the mid-rangey combo way. It's very, it's not weird to see the a aggressive version that uses a lot of the cheap aggressive humans or the white flying flash spirits. And those versions uh, try to, you know, their plan A is just beat the crap out of you. Their plan B is Eldrazi combo you and beat the crap out of you. So, we'll see what happens here. Uh, we got a, a red panther coming at us. Time to go to work. Now, I'm not going to I'm not I'm I don't feel like I've spent enough time or played enough with this deck to know that what the best build is. So, my build right now is just a bit of a it's kind of a first draft, so to speak, and I'm very I'm going to be looking a lot for what cards would be better or what cards are most effective. Like this version may not be fast enough if there are ramp decks out there. And I've been running into more ramp decks kind of the more we've played with people going back to good old ramp after trying a new thing or two. Um, this hand isn't very good. Uh, let's see. This hand is too much colorless and too little colored, but I think we'll hang on to it. I think I need to go get a blue, because that turns on more of my hand. I mean, I guess. I don't like it. But this is one of the things that we do need to see, is where the balance is for colored mana. It's why I'm running, you know, four Evolving Wilds, four Meandering Rivers, and all the other blue-white lands, is to try to get the right colors out of my cards without uh, giving up too much. But, I, uh, hey, <laughs> there's a good draw. Um. Let's see, I think that what I want to do is get the Infiltrator down, then we can play this the next turn, take that turn off, which isn't great, but it's something. And then the following turn I can either play Displacer with a blue mana up to protect it with Essence Flux, or depending on where the board is at, I can just drop a Whirler Rogue. So, yeah, 
That's gonna be the plan. And since this has flash, we'll just put it off. Um, no reason to put it out there for the opponent to A, know about, because knowledge is power, or B, um, interact with it, like kill it. Until If you play it on their end step, it's much more likely you'll get to sock him in the face. All right. So we're going to do what we said here and drop our river so that we have better mana next turn and take this turn pretty much off. It will exile the top card of his library, but that's hardly something to be super proud of. Not without a Wasteland Strangler or a Blight Herder in our deck. Which are other cards that, you know, maybe there's more of an ingest theme that I'm not pushing. Our opponent is taking their time, that's for sure. Uh, do I want to return it to my hand? Nope. Happy with it on the battlefield. Don't know if that will ever come up or ever be a useful play in the game, but we can find out. So, how does this battlefield look? He's green, so he probably doesn't run a sweeper, which makes me want to play the Whirler Rogue. But Displacer punches for three, Whirler Rogue for four. Yeah, it's gonna be the Rogue. It's gonna be the Rogue. Doesn't have to be the Displacer. The Flyers are also usually a lot stronger against green, because all that they really have is reach, but they usually don't have any flying creatures themselves in green. But yeah, it's a flicker deck. If you wanted to get, uh, in my opinion, super greedy, you could add red. Then you could run Pia Kira Nalar and Flame Shadow Conjuring and just go completely insane. But I don't, I don't think that man is quite what we want to do. So he is a ramp. Let's see if he's a green ramp or a waste ramp. He's a red green ramp. Not really what we wanted to see because. That does mean that sweepers are a thing that could happen here. But that's a really good draw, because now, if he has a sweeper, we can get it. So let's see what he's working with. And hopefully it's not two sweepers. <laughs> Fiery Impulse, Brute Strength, Rolling Thunder, Zendikar's Royal, Omnath. Well, I think the easy pick here is the Rolling Thunder. And we have to remember, like, that brute, that brute Strength is a pretty weird card to see. Not something I would run in ramp, but it's going to be a combat trick to remember. Um, Omnath is going to be the easy target for Reflector Mage if he draws a land. If he doesn't, and he, or if he plays Zendikar Royal off a of land, uh, yeah, then probably still maybe a Reflector Mage. Uh, Zendikar Royal tokens, if you blink them, um, if you use the ability of Displacer with the Zendikar Royal token, it doesn't come back. It just exiles it, so that's good. Now he's going to Fiery Impulse, I guess, the Infiltrator? Okay. And yeah, we're going to do uh, White Blue X. That's right, Super Twonky. Today is the day for White Blue X. Does he have the land? He does not have the land, so his hand is Omnath, Brute Force, and something that is not a land. That's a really good land number six for us. That lets us play Displacer with mana up to use it. And uh, let's get in there. And we're going to have an interesting choice, because with Displacer, well, we could displace our Thought Not Seer. Let's see what he does. <laughs> if we displace Thought Not Seer, it uh, gives him, it lets him draw an extra card, but then we get to nail his hand again. So we have to have priority to do that. So let's wait and see if he grants it to us. And he has conceded. Um, he's at two. All right, we'll accept the concession. That was a pretty, pretty clear win with nothing left to do but turn the creature sideways. This is, so that was a green-red ramp with a weird brute force for some reason. And we got that one. So we actually put up, it wasn't like we had a fast start, but we put up enough pressure quick enough that, uh, that well, that ramp deck did mostly nothing. Its first play was turn four explosive vegetation, so can't get cocky about that. Can't get cocky about that. Hey, he didn't have fog in his hand. He didn't have it. I, I, I had a thought not seer to ensure it. I would have blinked my Thought Not Seer on his end step and made sure he didn't have a Fog Nighthawk. You know why? Because I'm lead sauce. That's, that, that's some top level play right there. That's how you conquer the Fog meta. You Thought Not Seer the, 
of the fog right out of their hand on their end step. <laughs> so, yep, that's right. That's fog technology. <laughs> he would have had to, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> oh, man. What would I have done? It'd be game over, man. Game over. <laughs> what would I do now? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, This it hand is dead if I don't draw a land. But if I do, I get to smash reality. Ugh. This is so risky. I'm gonna go back. And this isn't much... This is kind of the same hand, but a little worse. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, 26 lands. You'd think I could count on drawing them, but let's put it... Let's check it. What's up, Bright Justice? Welcome. All right. Um, I really love your decks, and and gameplay, and enjoy your stream every time. Thanks for the infos and the deckless you provide for people like me, who are really good at playing but bad at deck building. Hey, I'm not even the best deck builder. I'm just willing to work hard enough to get better at it. Um, this is it's like a blue. Um, but thank you, thank you for the compliments. This is like a blue white mid range type deck. It uh. See, it's not really control. It's kind of about a lot of combos between Displacer, Reflector Mage, and Token Producers, and it has Reality Smasher, so it's not quite a uh, control. But apparently it's going to be um, blue-white get mana screwed this game. Let's see if we can... We've pretty much got one more turn to draw land before this goes completely out of control. There are 26 lands in this deck. 26. So... Thanks for asking, because it always feels better to tell people when I'm like, this is horrible. Um, I guess we'll do Spawner. There's no reason to really play a Reflector Mage on this. Let's save it for a bigger threat. Um, yep. But yeah, 26 lands in most of my decks, and especially ones that, you know, expect that I expect to get up to like five and six mana with. 26 because missing land drops it can be really fatal and I like to be able to keep two land hands and be able to count on drawing another of course that doesn't always happen but it looks like we're at least going to put up a fighting chance this time okay and it looks like hold priority did something he must have something to cast oh he wants to alter his reap okay when do you think the bug fixes will come in I don't think they will um and then maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised when they do. But I'm just telling you right now, I don't think they will. I think that uh, I think that the tone of the post from Wizards was, hey, we kind of expected this to happen, or it's like a design. So, you know, there you go. On Diaries, you don't have the list, but in Magic Duel's Helper, you have the deck list. Why not in your Diaries? Uh, because it's easier to put the link, but apparently some people miss them, so I can look back into that. It's only... A, little copy paste there is some formatting problems with copying over them to the blog it takes more time but if that really bothers you maybe I can uh, try to work that out they fixed the Xbox one gold buying yeah you knew they'd fix that I mean that's that's the kind of mistake that when it goes up the chain that your developer is costing you money and when it gets back to the developer that they're costing um, Microsoft and uh, wizard's money that's that's probably stuff in the contract that comes out of the developer's pocket so stainless probably has to reimburse uh, wizards for damages and such on that and lost revenue so you bet they uh, woke they probably got the you know the midnight bat phone phone call you know the red phone was ringing and flashing and they had to get right on that so of course they got that fixed but as far as our gameplay experience they haven't really shown me that they care Yeah, but I don't think they... Um, so they did say they plan to fix the priority in the fall, but they push it up in the future. Yep, I read that post too. What that post read like to me, though, is that they don't understand what issue we're talking about. Um, I mean, what are they going on? It doesn't work the way they intended with clues? I mean, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> Who cares about clues? I don't know about you guys. Like, clues aren't really my concern right now, right? So, hmm. 
not really uh yeah i don't think they really get what's going on so i don't expect it to get fixed especially if they don't get what's going on so there's reality smasher we're gonna go in with everything because he's probably gonna block right here right here and then shoot down right here so we may as well get a hit in and um which of your decks have the best win ratio right probably win loss ratio um Let's see, right now that would probably be the blue-white Planeswalker deck, but this deck is undefeated. So this deck is now 7-0. and All right, so that's what we're looking for. I've been testing a blue-white mid-range tempo deck like this. The power level is there, but I found the mana to be sketchy. Absolutely. That's why I'm running a lot of tap lands and why I'm not trying to be very aggressive, because I know I need turns 1 and 2 to fix my mana. It is sketchy. Is it normal that I can't play creatures exiled with Abbott? It is. That's part of um, that's part of the bug now. You need a way to maintain priority with what's in your hand, not with uh, what the Abbott flips over. So if you have a land in your hand and you flip something over with Abbott and you haven't played one, you'll have a chance to play what you flip with Abbott. If you only have instant speed effects in your hand or nothing in your hand, it's not going to even register what you have flipped with Abbott. Uh, so brutal to miss the third land drop and I run 26. I know it is, but hey, we missed it and we're still alive. We're not dead yet, so maybe it will be okay. And yeah, it was odd that they blame clues when the biggest problem are the Origins cards. Uh, the biggest problem with priority, quite frankly, is players who are trying to plan their turns and trying to play tactically and just feel like they've lost the ability to do that. That's, in my opinion, the main uh, reason you just see so much up in arms. Now, it creates bugs Bugs can be fixed, and probably will be eventually, not that they're in a rush. But the damage it does to people who care about their gameplay is a lot more significant, and it's why you're seeing such a kind of, uh, such a strong reaction, in my opinion. Blue-white Planeswalker, are, uh, the deck you are playing now. Nope, right now I'm playing a blue-white, um, it's... It's kind of tempo, it's kind of mid-range, it's kind of combo. It's built around Eldrazi Displacer, this guy right here, which for a colorless mana flickers one of your creatures. We don't have the colorless mana yet, hopefully we will soon. And um, creatures with comes into play abilities like Whirler Rogue, Reflector Mage. Uh, the Planeswalker is just in there because Planeswalkers are good. <laughs> you know, the end. Planeswalkers are really good. There's not a ton of ways to interact with them, and they do a lot of work. So this play goes right into a sweeper, but we still have a lot of resources in our hand, even if he hits us with the sweeper. Right now, if we draw lands, that's good. If we draw spells, they're probably not expensive. Uh, like, the worst draw in our deck is probably Archangel Avacyn, and that's a great draw if we live more than three... if we live long enough to see the next land. So we're in an okay spot, despite being short on lands. We've got a, ver a lot of good spells to play with. He's going to make some tokens. He's only at 9 life. And he's going to play that critter. Okie doke. So at 9 life, I doubt there's a way we can straight up kill him. Now, uh, I mean, this displacer is so awesome because it can, uh, if we ever find that colorless mana, it can exile this and return it so that it loses all those counters. Um, but otherwise this turn, I guess Reflector Mage and probably attack with everything. If he double blocks this, we can flux it, and we can, yeah. Yeah, this is good stuff. Let's see. There we go. Is it on Xbox 2 that you get the old gold prices for quests? I don't know. I don't track what gold I make. Um, I'm, pro I'm just probably the wrong person to ask. Maybe somebody else knows. Um, does anybody know if we're still getting the old gold payouts uh, on Xbox? I don't find any blue-white planeswalker on your deck list. Well, uh, Xbox, stop listening. Well, I do play... I don't always play the exact deck list that's posted over there because I'm always trying to try new cards and try different things. And I know many people would appreciate it if I did so that they could get the exact deck list I'm playing with, but I'm always testing um, the decks. So I'm if, if Jace is not on the list but he's in here right now, it's because I'm trying him out. So uh, one thing I have to get in the habit of, what I usually do is I have my lunch and I come down here and I watch a YouTube video or listen to a podcast and then I go right into my stream. And uh, it's really that's kind of my process. It's my system, you know. And what, what, since I have an audience now, like for a long time it was just me and a couple of you guys, but really, like 
people like tune in to watch me and I see a lot of the same people and that's awesome. I'm, I'm always amazed. But they expect a little bit of consistency out of what I do. And when I tell them to go to Magic Duel's Helper and see a decklist and it's not the same decklist that I'm playing, they want to ask me why. And that makes sense. So I have to... I have to try something new, something I don't really do right now, which is I have to, before I make the video, before I launch my stream, I have to go into my office, I have to update my deck list to the one I'm going to stick with for today, and then, after I do that, I uh, should come in here and start the stream so that you get a deck list that's exactly what I'm playing, so that if you want to play along with me and you want to try it out yourself, you can. So it's just a part of the process I need to improve on. Uh, something I just haven't, frankly, I haven't done a good job with yet. All right, um, he's at seven, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. He can block, block, take one, two, three, four, five, six. So this should do it. Mm -hmm. And let's get in there. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to try to change that habit. And that's really all it is. I ha just have the habit of not going back into the office after I finish work. Uh, and I, what I need to do is just make it, take a minute, go pick out my deck. Because I also don't even think about what deck I'm going to play until I sit down, right? Uh, until I launch my stream. I've usually hit broadcast before I even think about what deck I'm going to play. So I need to plan it in advance. I need to think about which deck I want to play. And then I need to go make sure that I like the list. And then I need to come in here, make sure the list matches what I said, and then I need to start my stream. So just a little tweak there to make it a better experience for you guys. And for the YouTube audience, because I'm sure that the guys who watch this on YouTube later would also appreciate it if the deck I played matched the deck list I linked to. I mean, things like that seem common sense. But there are, most people like set a deck list and then make a video. That's kind of what we've all become used to, I think. And... Uh, I've never done that. I'm always trying new cards. It, if I have an idea in the middle of the night to switch up in a deck and that I want to try, that's what I do. And uh, I don't. You, I haven't held myself accountable to anybody for like documenting the changes or anything like that. I mean, so that's just where I'm at with that. Thanks for asking. I don't know if you guys found that boring as uh, dishwater, but <laughs> that's what's up with why my deck lists haven't always perfectly matched what I'm playing. So that was a black, red, thieves deck. That was a pretty... I don't think that black, red, thieves has much of a chance against this list. It's... the, the flickering effects are just too nasty. Um, I just got 100 gold, so the prices are only bugged on PC. Okay. Right on. Uh, I I wasn't keeping track of my total. I mean, it may have said I got 100 gold, but did it actually add 100 gold? I'm not sure. <laughs> but hey, at least you guys can uh, get gold. Um, here on Xbox, of course, it was the drama that w people who bought gold never received it. They, they paid the money, and Xbox and my Wizards took their money, and they got no gold. But right now, it's like the Wild Wild West, you know? There's just tons of issues. Just tons of issues. But yeah, you know that they'll step right up and fix any bug that, you know... Stainless Soul fix any bug that leaves them on the hook for money. Whereas gameplay bugs... Eh. <laughs> Maybe they'll fix it. Maybe they won't. We'll all play anyway, right? <laughs> Since I also slowed my version of the deck, I found very aggressive decks like Mono White Humans, tons of one drops, and Lieutenant to be quite a problem. Great question. Um, I don't think that Wraths are really what I want to do here. I don't want to wipe the board of my creatures because my creatures, you know, do all the work for me. This hand is really slow. Um, just about any draw that's not a land should fit into our curve somewhere that could make it better, but of course there's no double blue. Um, the Spatial Contortion makes me want to keep it, and Avacyn's powerful. On the play, I'm going to try it. Uh, I don't think that Wrath of any kind of Planar Outburst effect is really going to benefit this deck. It really wants creatures on the battlefield, and it wants to keep creatures on the battlefield. Uh, if you're getting run over by quick white aggro dudes, then... I guess one thing we have to do is look at how much of the meta that is, 
and then we have to look at how much do we have to sacrifice from our deck to solve it. So um, maybe something like Wall of Resistance, which is something we can flicker to keep getting an awakened trigger for our lands. You know, that that, that would make uh, things harder, but who knows? Do you guys think that they will give us a set on August with the second Innistrad set? No idea. Um, it's hard to say. Until I hear an announcement, I won't even know what their intentions are. So it uh, looks like another red-green ramp, and they're taking their time. That's for sure. We got our second blue, which could be very helpful later. And maybe they're scared of counter spells. That would be great. Let's see if it's explosive vegetation time. If so, we're going to punch them for five. It's a life spring druid. Well... Uh, many of you young, ga many of you who haven't played Magic as long as me may not have heard the term "bolt the bird." But those of you who have played a long time know that when they play a mana dork, you kill it. You cast your kill spell and make it die because the tempo it gains and the ability it gives them to cast bigger things is significant. All right, that's a good draw. That's let's get to work. Let's get big. <laughs> So this will be interesting because the red-green ramp deck is kind of not moving super fast and we are moving very slow, but can we still punish them and beat them before they cast things that are too big for us to deal with even though we moved slow? It's going to be interesting. <laughs> there is an epic Kozilek's return flashback bug. If you say yes, it exiles itself and blows everything up. If you say no, it still blows everything up and doesn't exile so you can use it again. Ha! I haven't, uh, I have yet to flash back Kozilek's return. It just hasn't happened for me at the moment. But that is, you're right, that's an awesome bug. <laughs> in, in, in the sense that it's absolutely ridiculous. So, let's see, how do we want to handle this situation? I think we want to keep attacking. So we can play Jace. We can minus Jace. He gets this creature back. It has power and toughness equals number of cards in his hand, so it'll keep getting bigger. But this will let us get in more damage, and it eats up his whole turn, and we get to keep our Jace. So I like this play. He may get to draw more cards with it, but right now, uh, he's going to die with cards in his hand if we're going to win this game. So him drawing more cards isn't nearly as important as him getting cards to stay on the battlefield. And it's always important, like, in a way we gave him value, but it's important to know where you are in a game and what's going to decide the outcome of the game. And in this case, it's not really going to be the number of cards in his hand. Maybe there's one or two amazing cards he could draw that would shift the balance, but for the most part, like, it's clear right now. Look how many cards are in his hand. He's going to die with cards in his hand. <laughs> We can't, we can't grind value, we can't grind out all the cards in his hand. We just have to get under them before he can cast them. So, Devour in Flames, Targeting Reality Smasher, Discarding a Card. Alright, it sets him back on land. It sets him back on cards. It undoes kind of that issue we had. And don't worry, we've got more threats. We have more threats. And we still have a Jace. Well, oh, Reef Hydra going down. Devour in Flames, interesting card. Interesting in a ramp deck, for sure. Uh, I mean, on one hand... Oh, okay. So he can... Oh, wow. He's going to double that. All right, good for him. Good turn. I mean, he set himself back pretty far, but good turn. Because he got our board out of there. But let's see what happens. Sorry about asking this again. My net crashed. How do you beat other hyper-aggressive decks? Well, we have to play against some, so I can try to learn that. <laughs> Sorry. Bit of a cop-out answer, but... Um, it's true. It's kind of where I'm at. Um, I think I want to play this and then follow it with this. He's going to play that 6-6 six, six guy, so we need a way to get around it. We can also hold up for Avacyn, but I'd rather make her a surprise. Especially if he's going to do something crazy like a Rolling Thunder. Um, and right now on 4 mana, I think he's just going to play that Werewolf again, which is something we can blink with the Displacer. <sighs> How can you provide a daily stream without having Miss CGB ripping your head off? Well, uh, she is upstairs um, taking a nap, I believe. And this is usually her time of day to, uh, if she wants to work, she does that during this part of the day. The other thing she does during this part of the day is take a nap or build a puzzle. Uh, or um, uh, she really likes puzzling or and watches some TV that I don't like to watch. So uh, she has her floor of the house and I have mine. We've both worked from home and worked in the same company for several years, so we've become pretty good at knowing 
like where the limits for each other are and yeah she pretty much leaves me alone this for most of the day and I leave her alo alone for most of the day so uh, this is interesting should I go for the flicker attack I think what I definitely want to do is I, was, I can also go Drowner, Sacrifice, Flick, Tap, Attack. Or I can get into Avacyn if he tries to mess with anything. And I even got the Flux to make it indestructible. But I think that the clear... I think the clear easy play here is the Drowner. So I'm going to go with what makes just a lot of sense. If mono white, if if you're if you're doing great against everything but mono white, uh, then maybe it's either a it depends how much you play mono white, whether or not you need to change anything, and b um, you may you have to decide like what cards could just be better against mono white that don't take away too much from the rest of the deck. I do have I have seen a couple mono white decks showing up on iOS, and they are really good. It's one of the decks I certainly want to show you guys. So. Like, Dimension, Dimensional Infiltrator right here. This is a card that I don't think has great synergy with the deck. The comes into play ability doesn't do much. Or, um, there's no comes into play ability. I mean, the activated ability, uh, that doesn't do much either. Okay, so, um, this is the kind of card that could be subbed out for something that might do a little bit better against an aggro type deck. Um, some things that could help might be Warping Whale, um... Uh, displacement Wave is another thing that might be able to help. Since we have ETBs, Displacement Wave would probably benefit us more than our opponent. So, um, there's pro that is a sort of Wrath that might make more sense for our deck. So, uh, there's some ideas, you know, just a, just a couple ideas for you. Alright, he's gonna go big with Nissa's Renewal here. He is up to 12. How much power do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Not quite enough. Okay, but we can kill him with Archangel Avacyn. So, can I tap? Okay. Well, if I tap him, though, let me see. Tap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sacrifice the Scion means Avacyn flips. So we play Avacyn first, then we sacrifice the Scion. Okay, I got him. So far, um... So far, Jolly, uh, Dimensional Infiltrator has been medium and is probably unnecessary to the deck, while uh, while Essence Flux has been pretty awesome, since almost everything in the deck has a comes into play ability. So, because a creature died while Avacyn's on the battlefield, on the next upkeep she's going to flip, and when she does, she'll deal three damage to our opponent, and that will end the game. <laughs> A whale so big it warps reality. Just like vamps. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, aggro decks. Uh, like, human... I don't know if the human deck dies to... It, it dies... Let's let's be specific. The human deck, it's going to die to languish. But because it has uh, cards like Enshrouding Mist, it doesn't necessarily die to Radiant Flames and Archangel Avacyn and make a stand, right? So Radiant Flames and Planar Outburst aren't necessarily going to beat that deck. Which is going to make it pretty tough. <laughs> oh, a warping whale joke. A whale so big it warps reality. Uh, ah, uh -huh. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so that was another green-red ramp, although a very odd one with uh, that card-drawing werewolf. But that is... In four games, that's my third green-red ramp. <laughs> In four games. Uh, one of them was off-stream. Kind of my warm-up to make sure my brain's working. Um, but yeah, uh, green-red ramp. We just kind of got out of the green-red ramp format. And some people are like, screw this, let's go back to it. <laughs> Although I don't see why. I love, I love all the cards we have for the format now. I absolutely adore the format we have now. Uh, it's got to be the biggest um, duels game as far as uh, card selection that we've ever had. Uh, greetings, Jay Wolf. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. 
folks from the chat. Again, uh, don't mind taking questions. Sometimes I may miss your question because I have to think, or I may ignore your question because I'm busy thinking, but you guys are welcome to jump in here and chat it up with me. Um, I've noticed like just the amount of talk on my channel has gone up significantly since this expansion came out, which is mostly because I have more viewers than I've ever had before. For a long time, it was kind of me talking to myself, and now it's me talking to you guys. Am I the only one having sound problems with the stream? I hope so. Uh, I, if, if there are problems, I'm not aware of them, and I'm sorry that you're having problems. Everything's fine. Yeah, thanks, guys. Please let them know. Need more diaries? Um, I just wrote a bit today, and I wrote a bit yesterday. I, I, took mo I took the last half of last week off because I just wanted to play the game so I'd have more to write about, but I have a lot to write about. So, um, But thanks. That's my blog, Haunted Flower Duels Diaries. If you like that, uh, it's all about duels all the time. So yeah, go check it out. Alright, are we up against elves? Nope. Black Red. Black Red aggro. Okay. Interesting. So how do we want to handle black red aggro? I think we can make him take this back cuz we don't want him to have a very productive turn and if he can pump his wolf that he left on the battlefield, that's a productive turn for him. So I think the wolf is the target. And we are without the colorless, so we're going to have to draw one. There's 14 ways to get it. Uh, if we include the sky spawners, so hopefully we'll see one soon because now we're up to two colorless cards of which I think there are uh, nine cards that require the colorless to be effective. So we have more sources than we have cards and yet we have two more cards and no sources. Darn you magic! Sometimes you can be a heartless creature. Alright, he's he's all about that aggro. I mean, wow. He's he's about getting on that. Yeah, bring that. Okay. Um, so our opponent just made a big mistake. If he had attacked with the Thornbow before he cast his spells, I probably would have at least had to think about blocking. But if you're going to make a Stone Cold bluff like that to deal one damage, don't do it before you tap out to play your spells, because now I know it's a bluff. It's, it's so clear. Whereas before, players would have been very, very tempted to not... Uh, to not block to preserve their 2-3 body. Alright, so we're going to be the defense, which means we're just going to try to flood the board up. We now have three of those colorless spells and no colorless source. So this is getting to be a problem. Could be an issue for, the, for this game. If we don't draw a colorless source pretty soon, we're going to start having turns that are not effective. Um, have you... Jolly, have you tried... Uh, j guys in the chat, in case he can't understand me, just tell him to restart the stream, you know, or close Twitch and come back. I think I've had that issue before, and usually it fixes itself. Wow, he's thinking about getting in there. Okay. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess we block like this. And he's gonna tighten strength, okay. That's fine. I mean, I, that's a two for one. Uh, 2 for 1.5, or 1.3, because he can use his little arsonist guy to kill a Thopter token. Not a big deal. But, I mean, that's the play he wants to make. And uh, we bottlenecked his red mana with that pump spell, so he can't play that wolf this turn. Does he have any other plays? He's going to sack his warped landscape. Okay. I don't consider that a very good uh, turn for him. I guess you gotta do something, but now we get to untap with Flux on Whirler Rogue. Declaration and Stone. Not really a great time for this card, but since we don't have anything going on with our turn, we're going to use it. And we'll attack, and so my hope is that he plays that wolf and tries to hit me with it, and we can use Essence Flux to ambush it and make more Thopters. Kind of set him up. Always be trapping was uh, something I used to say on my channel all the time. I don't know why I stopped, but uh, always be setting traps for your opponent. They can't fall into them, and they don't set themselves. Uh, you got to set the traps for them. 
Okay, Dusk Stalker. I think we do want to trade our Whirler Rogue and two of the Thopters for this, because we just need to stay alive long enough to draw um, the Colorless Source or better cards. Because I think our cards are going to be better in the long game than our opponents. So if we just keep trading, I think we'll be okay. Not sure why Declaration Stone all go to targets one of your own dudes. Eh. I guess they see it as some kind of a um, benefit. So he's going to... That Vampiric Rites kind of shakes things up. We know the last card in his hand is Haste Wolf. Hey, there's, a, there's the land we needed. Let's hold our Thopters back to see if we can convince him not to attack with Haste Wolf. Because we don't really want him to. We don't want to get popped. <laughs> we would like him to sit back so that we can Spatial Contort it. Although I don't plan to block it. I, sp I plan to Spatial Contort it. <laughs> He's drawing cards, which makes Thought Not Seer a good play for next turn. So... He's probably thinking right now if he wants to play that wolf in attack or if he has something better to do. Thinking pretty hard. So come on, man. It's one or the other. I mean, do you want to trade with one Thopter? Because he doesn't have the mana right now to activate uh, his Haste Wolf twice. Or even once. So, unless he does and he's slow rolling it. He's running that timer, though. He's, this, this apparently is the crossroads for our opponent. This is the moment where he has to pull up his hoodie, put his hands in his hair, drink, you know, have an energy drink, and really spit some steam out of the ears to find the right line. We've all been there, it happens. Quit and desync, <laughs> that could be that too. <laughs> How does Essence Flux set up a trap? Well, when I attacked with my Whirler Rogue, he thought he wasn't gonna have a blocker when he brought in the 5-3, and the Essence Flux untapped the Whirler Rogue and made more Thopters so I could block him. He probably didn't want to run his Dust Stalker, because it's a really good 4-drop, 5-power haste creature, into uh, a couple of tokens, but that's what happened, because we trapped him. And our opponent just lost their turn. That's... that's sad. Um... okay. Uh... what's up? Look at that. See, are you guys seeing this slow zoom? <laughs> yeah, I guess we're frozen. Never mind. Guess nothing matters now. <laughs> oh, now it's gonna work. And of course I drew another Evolving Wilds right on time. Oh well. I'm sure my opponent lost that my opponent lost their whole turn, so can't be too upset. Although, eh, let's let's just do what we did last turn. If he doesn't want to send the wolf, see if we can talk him out of sending the wolf. Let's try to activate this now before we lose the ability to. And I think more blue is more important than more white because of the essence uh, flux. I would say a trap is opponent interaction. You kind of show them a path and hope they'll go down it, and if they do, they get an outcome that they didn't want. I consider that very imp important interaction with the opponent. But maybe you're thinking of something that's technically different. If so, that's cool. Um, our opponent's gonna run the clock again. I mean, maybe this is his attempt to freeze me out or get me to quit. So they get some gold. I mean, I got a, I got a game. I got a game to win here. What rank is he? Let's see. Two. Hmm. Maybe he does just really need the gold. <laughs> well, 
Well, I want to thought not see her and see his hand and make sure that, you know, we're in a winning position or that I would have won this game before I leave. I'm not opposed to giving him gold. I'm really not opposed to conceding so that he gets some cash to buy more cards. I just, I want to see your hand first. I want to know that we would have won the game. And apparently he's going to make us really wait for that. Wait for that knowledge. <laughs> Stupid evolving wilds coming in to play tapped. <laughs> and we are almost there <laughs> I know this is uh, the most exciting of streams now I don't like rewarding opponents for being jerks but you know yeah you're right Nighthawk sometimes you just gotta pee so let's have a look at this hand Mobilizer Eldrazi, Swiftwing, Ember Hauler, Wolf. I guess the Swiftwing is the biggest pain in the butt. I mean, Spatial Contortion, though, takes out any of this junk. I mean, this is just junk, really. So. Steam went down today. Ah, ta-da. There you go. Damage. All right, let's go see if our opponent came back before we uh, give in to hate. <laughs> we'll count to we'll count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. We're gonna count it as a win, but it's a junk win, so it doesn't really matter. But our opponent can have the gold. And then maybe they'll repeat that absolute douchebaggery behavior in the future. But from now on, uh, if you come across NYC, uh, what was that name? NYC something. Anyway, if you come across him on Xbox, he's a jackass. All right. <sighs> Let's see, we got some questions. Um, what do you think about a black, blue, red, white, plane walker tutelage deck? A friend play with this deck and win a lot 90% of all his games. Cool, he should keep playing it. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to win that many games, absolutely you play it. Um, I don't see a point to running tutelage with the planeswalkers. I just think the planeswalkers can win the game, whereas tutelage does nothing on turn three. And instead of doing nothing, you could do uh, something to set up your planeswalkers better. Either ramp into them with Eldrazi Sky Spawner so you can jump right to the fives, or and have some blockers or radiant flames or something so that your planeswalkers are more likely to live. That's my take on it. But if he's winning that much, he doesn't need my advice, right? They should make turns shorter and shorter. So the longer you take, the more... Uh, if you don't do anything, the longer you take, the less time they give you. Yeah, it makes sense. I'd be all for that. Uh, it's a good hand, I think. It's going to be a little slow, and we're on the draw, so we could be in trouble. Could run us over, but we're going to see what happens. <laughs> He would probably be disappointed with the results if he were a shrink because I'm not going to be bitter about it. Just It's just a thing that happens. It's just some magic. It's just a game. Is it annoying? I'm mostly annoyed for you guys. You know, you show up here to watch some duels content, not to watch somebody sit there and do nothing. So, not really annoyed for myself. In general, I'm going to try, and I'm not going to be necessarily good at this, so maybe you guys have to keep me honest, but I'm going to try to uh, give the gold to the younger players more often than I have, instead of being worried about rank 40. Like, if I'm clearly playing against somebody with a with less cards who's trying to unlock the set, I should just concede to them so that they get gold, when at least when I've figured out that the game is pretty much in my favor, that I'm going to pull it off. 
So that's kind of where I'm sitting with all that. So white, white from the opponent. They're running about 70 cards. Please run 60 cards. Makes your decks run smoother. And makes you have your good draws more often than you would have them otherwise. Most of the time. And it's a Heliod's Pilgrim. Uh, what do you think? Suppression Bonds? I bet Suppression Bonds. What's it going to be? High School Mary Jane? Which is not something you should be doing in high school. It's Suppression Bonds. How'd I know? How did I know? Suppression Bonds is one card that gets totally ruined by Essence Flux, you guys. Ruined. Alright, um, so... What do we want to get Suppressions Bonded? I think I want Displacer to get Suppressions Bonded. I don't want to reflect your Mage's Creature. I don't think that playing the Sky Spawner is going to matter. But maybe we should in case we're going to draw a Reality Smasher. It's not like we're going to blink with this next turn. Yeah, on the off chance that we draw a Reality Smasher, we will play this. <sighs> White and Angry. That should definitely be the name of the deck. White Weenies Matter. Make it a hashtag. Uh, there's all kinds of silly things that you can say about white decks, but the current white aggro deck is a pain. It is a, it is a beating. <sighs> I have had my issues with it over on the iOS. Not, not on Xbox yet, though. Okay. So, Nimbus Wings and Knight of the White Orchid. Well, how do I want to deal with Mr. Nimbus Wings? If I flicker his creature, he gets to go fetch another enchantment. Not that that'll matter, because Displacer pretty much ruins auras. Like, like this card just makes your opponent's auras horrible. <laughs> I guess we'll just... Um, we'll just get Displacer out there, and we'll start looking for interesting ways to wreak havoc. It's bigger than the Knight of the White Orchid, so he'll have to figure something out. Obviously, I won't be able to kind of, um, let's see, White Humans Coexist has a version. I'll have to check it out. Is it on the um, Magic Duel's Helper Coexist's uh, human stack? I'll be able to check uh, soon. I just don't want to pull out the iPad right now mid-game. Because this, this deck has a lot of instant speed interaction, like Essence Flux and Spatial Contortion. And if I'm pulling out the iPad, I might just miss it when my opponent tries to cast Declaration and Stone on my Displacer. He should definitely cast the Suppression Bonds on it. Siegecraft. Okay. Yeah. Um, Could have blown that up, but I don't really see the point. I'm just going to take this damage. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to ruin their day here in a minute. Now, I can fire off one of these Fluxes. I doubt I need two, and I may need the Scions. So I'm going to make some more Scions here. You want to read Essence Flux? Okay, read yourself some Essence Flux. It's a flicker effect. We don't have any spirits to put the plus one, plus one counter on it. <laughs> Let's see here. So I think the play is Reflector Mage, and then we can flux it to bounce his other creature. Or we don't play Reflector Mage at all, and we just dis start displacing his creatures. Now, if I Reflector Mage his Knight, so let's do it like this. Because I want to play my land. Okay. So now he loses his Siegecraft, which is why I was saying this deck is just going to be amazing against Auras. Um, yeah. Let's try to trap him with Essence Flux here. Hopefully he'll cast Suppression Bond's main phase on the Displacer before he tries to attack us. That would be the gravy. Here it comes. 
What's he going to cast it on? The Displacer. Awesome. So he's he's going to fall right into a trap again. So here comes the Essence Flux Trap Part 2. Oh, no. Guess not. He's just going to send the flyer for whatever reason. All right. Let's get rid of those suppression bonds. <laughs> now those are gone. Another land. Spatial Contortion Reflector Mage sounds like a good turn. Alright. Hit that. Loses. So, like, his graveyard is just full of auras that have run into Eldrazi Displacer. So, um, so, auras weren't that good to begin with, but at least you could run a few and didn't have to feel bad in the last duels. Now you really just shouldn't run, like, Suppression Ponds or any of this stuff at all. Because Eldrazi Displacer just will make your life very sad. Okay, he's going to target the Displacer, which can't save itself, but that's okay. At this point, I think we did the damage. And he's going to play a Felidar Cub. That's no big deal. Um, he's going to take four no matter what here from the attack, but let's play Drowner just to make sure. Tap. Celestial Flare he has. But that'll still be lethal. Oh, okay, he left. If he had stayed, I would have conceded uh, right before the damage for giving him props for sticking it out. But we'll accept the concession, I suppose. <sighs> I think we've been pretty fortunate so far. We haven't played any tough opponents, so... I don't feel like my deck has quite been stress tested, and I would like to see it get stress tested. So, it's I'm inviting I'm, I'm inviting something to make me salty. Somebody come uh, really throw a haymaker at me, so I can see how we handle it. Uh, maybe those white aggro decks. I would love if one of those would come out, since it sounds like Jolly's had some trouble beating white aggro with my deck. I'd like to experience the matchup before I give advice on it. We probably need a lower curve if white aggro is seriously a thing. Like, right now, to get the mana right, I feel like I do tapped land, tapped land a lot. And that is probably not going to get it done ever against white aggro. Mm. Alright. First uh, kind of no connecty today. Let's see if we can uh, overcome... You missed a Siegecraft game yonder. I know. You'll have to you'll have to look that up. But Siegecraft came and it went. It got blinkied. Got blinkied by the displacer. Um so yeah, I guess uh, Steam is having their issues today. We had some issues yesterday. We got taken offline for a little while for no reason that I could detect and we got back on within a few minutes, thank goodness, but it threatened the it did threaten the steam the stream for a minute, you know what I mean? Did it did threaten our good time. I think the highest costing card in coexist is Kithion's Irregulars. He doesn't run Avacyn Archangel, huh? I find Archangel to be pretty pretty huge in that deck as a closer or a save for your team from a planar outburst or radiant flames or just a big uh, final attack. <laughs> So, um, looks like we're frozen again. Looks like we're frozen, frozen again. Back out, get ready to back back in. Sadly, this has to be, uh, whichever game I'm playing here has to be the last one. I've got somewhere to go at 445. So I got 25 minutes for a game. Hopefully we connect to something really soon. Somebody opened uh, Nahiri and Sorin back to back. Boom, don't you feel like king of the world? Yeah, yeah, did it. Huh. 
<laughs> it's always about this time of day when I know I have to go somewhere that I seem to have these connection issues. Which is a shame. I don't suppose I can talk anybody out there into jumping in and saving me from myself. But um, I really do want to get one more game at least here. But definitely one. Gotta start with one. It starts with one. Ah. <sighs> Searching, searching. Let's go. Let's go. So let me get over here. So let's see. Oh, there's a lot of people on uh, Magic Duel's Helper nowadays, too. I'm seeing more and more. I like the uh, star ratings. I think those are pretty cool. The more people actually give ratings, I think the more it will get used. And uh, so Steely Dano's over there. Crider is over there. Hey, cool. Um, Dream Maker. I really like the site. I think it's a cool little interface that lets me visually build my decks when I'm not by my Xbox. Um, where is Coexist's little humans that could monstrosity? Uh, I see his Jun deck. If I click on him, does it show me all his decks? There they are. Okay, white humans. White humans by the coexisting one. Oh look, it's got the oh, it's got the visual scrolly thing, so you can scroll through the deck now. Oh, that's tight. That's tight. I love it. Oh yes. Ah uh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, now I can just kind of scroll the deck instead of looking at a paper list. Oh, that's a beautiful touch. That is gorgeous. Um, so he's got six auras in there. He's got Archangel, Kithian, and Gideon. No, he doesn't. Ha he has Archangel ties. He doesn't have Avacyn Archangel. That does surprise me. I would want that card. I just I love it so much. He's got the Blessed Spirits for some synergy with the enchantments. I wouldn't run those. What I'd probably run instead of like Grasp and Nimbus Wings, because that is kind of dialing in on the strategy a bit. Maybe still Nimbus Wings, because Flyers are amazing. But for Grasp, I would probably run the. I I like the Toppelgeists because it's attached to a body. I think that has. You know, I think more bodies has more synergy with the rest of the deck. More bodies are better with always watching. More bodies are better with bygone bishop. More bodies are better than with militia captain. More bodies are better with Thalia's lieutenant. Oh wait, they're spirits, they're not humans. But more bodies are better with Consul's lieutenant and with uh, Kithian. So I would definitely run Toppelgeist and not Grasp of the Hyromancer. I'd also consider those uh, little guys um, Anointer of Champions. Uh, I like a couple anointer champions because I love the way that they combo with um, the vigilance uh, enchantment always watching when they have vigilance uh, an anointer of champions can attack and it can pump itself so always watching plus anointer of champions means you paid one white for a 3-3 three, three. doesn't that just sound that just sounds juicy to me I don't know about you guys <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Claw X, the man. The man, I must say. It's in the deck list, but not in the dump with the other creatures. Maybe because it has a comma in the name. Hmm. Uh, I guess I missed what Yonder asked about. Sorry. I was, I was reading and stuff. Yeah, uh, this, this hand doesn't look too bad, does it? <laughs> this hand looks all right. <laughs> You don't want to spam my channel with bug reports? <laughs> Alrighty. Ah. <laughs> a feedback link. Where should I? So he's talk. You must be talking about the website. I'm like, I don't know where on my channel I'm supposed to put a feedback link. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. All right. So we're gonna get our matter reshaper down. Then we'll get our Thought Knot Seer down. Our opponent might be playing the same type of deck. So far I see plenty of blue-white happening. <laughs> well, big turn. We've kind of broken serve. We set up our mana, then we made a play. Our opponent has set up their uh, mana. But they haven't made a play, so what's it going to be? Heliod's Pilgrim. Didn't we just talk about how this deck wrecks enchantments? <laughs> it's a two rank. Um, Siegecraft. Okay, um, good news. 
Yonder, we've got another Siegecraft game, dude. You, you didn't miss it. It's right here. It's right here waiting for you. Now, the real question now is, am I going to thought not see her that Siegecraft? <laughs> we'll, we'll find out after this attack. <laughs> All right. Let's put it... I mean, do you think they know that Divine Favor's gone? Do you think that they had Divine Favor in here and just didn't realize? All right. Um... I don't think I have anything for this to target. Nope. Um, check this out. I can look, go look at my hand, and then I can look at this again. That's me doing the left trigger. Um, I really think the best thing in here is this card. But at the same time, I could just Declaration Stone him. So I'm going to take the other creature. If I keep him from ever having a creature, then his auras are no good. And he drew the fourth land, so is it going to be Siegecraft? Is it going to be Invocation of Saint Traft? Siegecraft. Lockdown. GG. I tried, guys. I tried. But I just, I couldn't overcome that Siegecraft. <laughs> Alright, um, let's uh, just tell him to go get a clue. In a very rude sort of manner. I guess planes is what we need. Flooding out a little, but we've got so much uh, tempo right now. Hopefully we can ride to victory. If he gives me priority next turn before casting a creature, I might use the Thought Knot trick to try to make sure he doesn't get another creature. But, I mean, we know he has Boon Weaver. He's just so far away from that, mana-wise. <laughs> What's it gonna be? If he gives me priority, I'll have quite the decision to make on whether to flux thought not or not. But if he gives me priority, he probably didn't draw a creature. Now if he activates the clue, he could draw a creature. But at the same time, uh, do I want to respond to this? If I respond to it, I won't get to pick from the card he draws with the clue. So no, I don't think I do. There we go. And there's a creature, so... Not, not good. But maybe we can uh, talk him into blocking this turn, since we're going to have a pretty good attack coming at him. And a lot of ways to push through lethal. Oh, ha <laughs> ha! Indeed. Um, there you go. Let's do that. That's that. That don't seem right. That seemed pretty mean. <laughs> All right, dude. Now you got to block. No choice. Once again, you know, uh, if our opponent sticks around, if they stick around for the lethal attack, I will concede to them at the last minute and give them the gold. We'll see if they are willing to take it, if they are man enough to take it. Can you show Red Eldrazi aggro? That's what I'm playing now very successfully. I think the man base needs a little fixing. I'm bad at deck building to do it myself. Uh, I will try to get that done in the very near future. How about that? Um, it won't be today. Today, uh, this is my last game for today, but I will try to get a video on Red Eldrazi Aggro for you soon. Uh, hopefully this week. Probably this week. I can probably do it tomorrow unless something else tickles my fancy so much I just have to make that video instead. Oh, he left. Okay. Um, we need some closure, so I'm going to just play this out. He's going to Suppressions Bonds Reality Smasher, discarding Invocation of St. Traft. I'm going to Energy Flux it so it drops Suppression Bonds. Booyah. <laughs> and there we go. So this is the end of today's stream. Thank you very much for hanging out on uh, this. We didn't get what I would call a big challenge for this white-blue uh, Eldrazi deck. I want a better challenge with it. From just my work today, I, let's see, retry, connect to servers. Did I lose, 
it says I lost my server connection. <laughs> what on earth is going on? I was going to open the deck builder back up and try to find any changes that we might want to make. I don't think I want to run Dimensional Infiltrator, and I don't think the deck needs Big Jace, but I may keep him anyway. Um, but probably Dimensional Infiltrator could be a better defense or removal or card like that since you said it has problems there's some reports from the floor that it has problems with white aggro which I do expect to be a, a deck that people start picking up more on so um, changes uh, I don't know I guess we'll probably have to do another video with it later and try to get better competition so uh, for today I'm out of here thank you guys very much for hanging out and I will see you again soon